Bruce Dickinson on my screen. Hey, man, how are you? Great to I see you. I am doing very well, mate. I'm, uh, yeah, happy, happy bunny and uh, very pleased the new record is unleashed. Yes, yes, it is. Your 17th studio album and the first in six years after uh, the Book of Souls, which is another sprawling opus, just like your last record from 2015. Well, I think the last one was 92 minutes. This one clocks in at 82. You've got the average song length of about eight and a half minutes. There's three at the end that's over 10. Yeah, I mean, yeah. in true maiden form, that's what we want to see, right? Well, that knocks up the average just a little bit. I mean, we've got uh, we've got a four minute song and a five minute song, and uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, as well, uh, we've we've actually got a couple of tunes on there. I mean, like Darkest Hour, which is uh, I don't know how it's like. It comes in at maybe seven minutes or something else like that. But bizarrely, of course, there's there's a a lot of uh, intro and outro, which is effectively seagulls and and waves. Uh, washing up on a beach so i mean if you, nice. if you if you get rid of the seagulls it's actually uh, <laughs> quite, a bit, quite a bit more compact you know um and even the same for like riding on the wall you know so um that's a lot shorter than the version on youtube appears because of course we have credits and everything else and it says sure. this song is seven minutes long get rid of the credits and also if you look at where the riff actually kind of kicks in again mm. that's quite a tight little tune um but um, uh, yeah, there's there's a very varied bunch of songs on the record, and it's almost like a a, a trip through all the kinds of styles that the band has embraced over the last forty years. I mean, um, you know, a track like there's one track called "Days of Future Past." You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that could have been on like power slave or peace of mind you know i mean it's got that sort of vibe to it yeah um uh, th then you know riding on the wall is uh, that is a little bit left field for us it's almost it like is it was kind of a departure from the maiden that i'm used to hearing and yeah had yeah, a big yeah. hand in the concept for the video too right yeah well the 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 concept for the video once we decided that that was going to be the opening track and and you know we thought it was kind of, you know, it was fairly catchy tune and mm -hmm. relative, you know, a, a bit more convention, conventional than we'd, we'd normally do. Um, and Steve really loved it. And he said, you know, that's got to be the first track. And we went, OK, cool. <laughs> so, so we had no idea uh, that there was going to be obviously the pandemic and all the rest of it. So during the lockdown, mm -hmm. I said to Rod, my manager, I said, look, I said, maybe we should think about doing something really special in terms of a video um uh, like uh something really quite epic uh, uh we're not going to be able to film it with real people because of all the covid and the restrictions and everything sure. maybe we should do something with animation and we had some friends who used to look at pixar so i wrote a story uh ran it past them they storyboarded uh like just like eight scenes from it and went well these are the right guys to produce it with us and then we settled on this English company, Blink Inc., to do the actual animation. The whole thing took eight months from inception Whoa. to finishing up. Yeah, eight months. That's how long it takes to do animation. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Um, that is crazy. Well, it's worth yeah. it. I mean, the the finished product uh, could, is amazing. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. it between the video and the song, it really uh, kind of set tongues wagging um, among the kind of metal community and even people maybe outside having who saw the video and went wow, yeah this is cool what this is a heavy metal band doing a video like that you know that's because right. a lot of comments on people saying things like uh wow this is just great animation this is like art you know like, you know sure and and that was the idea was to do something that and that yes that fit fitted the music but also was a standalone kind of work on its own and so we did a special effects version where we made a lot of the the sounds on the video actually come to life which obviously with the track there's right, no motorcycles right. on there you know, <laughs> and, uh, sure. and sound of gunfire boots cars driving away my favorite is the uh on the sfx version which is on youtube my favorite is when um the kind of presidential cadillac is driving away and in the rearview right. mirror you see the the three uh kind of like faceless faceless civil servants uh from uh from from great britain behind and and the hand comes out and adjusts the mirror, and the mirror goes, <laughs> yeah. like that it's sweet <laughs> right, and just like, right. oh, that's 
That's genius, it's the, it's the little know? thing. It's so, the, the nuances, right? Yeah. And, and it's, speaking yeah, of this video, no, you guys did a whole, like a month long, kind of a treasure hunt for fans online leading up to the release of the video and the single with uh, with clues on the title and everything else. Yeah, well, so much of, uh, of that was, um, I, there was an idea that we should do that, but there was a kind of unintended consequence of a... Uh, uh kind of a screw up on the on on the actual vid itself so at the beginning there's um there's a an invitation uh that the the, the maiden fan who's walking through the desert he kind of face plants he's dead he's clutching this invitation like his last hope is he's going to go to you know Belshazzar's feast and then his problems are all going to be over and all of humanity is walking towards this great you know sort of like um uh cathedral-like structure which is the party house on the hill and they're thinking this is going to solve all my problems you know mm -hmm. and um uh, basically in amongst the complexities of getting all the rest of the animation done we got almost to the end of the whole process and i we looked at it again and i went how where's the invite and they went, <laughs> and they went oh uh oh we forgot, we forgot uh, that. <laughs> is, 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 and they went, is that really important? I went, yes, it is really important. Uh, yeah. Because without it, it, none of it makes any sense. Right. You know, it's like having Star Wars without the preamble at the beginning. You'd be half, <laughs> right. You'd be halfway through the first first half of the movie going, what the hell is this all about? <laughs> you know, what is the, the force? Is far away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's that once upon a time moment that you need some way anyway so th the guys at pixar we, we've got a fix for it and it's super quick and it won't require huge reanimation of things mm. and it was the idea was to have this poster floating down this invite so i said well let's just make it like a one of those like uh homemade posters for like a rave or underground happening that you know you see posted up on the sides of yeah know, concrete posts sure let's do that and let's and i came up with the, the you know some of the the phraseology on it um and that provoked the idea of why don't we use that for a t-shirt and for posters and why don't we have that as like a uh as if it was in the real world but okay. it would be in the virtual world it'd be kind of a global campaign um and and that's where the idea came from for that uh, but the execution of it all and all the detail was all uh, this amazing girl in our um maiden crew called sarah philp and she does all our social media and she's mm -hmm. a really she's this she she's a, a really really talented girl uh big biker you know just nice. like, proper, <laughs> you know proper motorcycle yeah. fiend Proper okay. motorcycle fiend, you know, and she's super, super smart. And she came up with, you know, all of the real meat and potatoes content to this. So absolutely brilliant. I just, I was watching from the sidelines going, yeah, this is actually really cool, you know. Well, it sounds like you've obviously had a huge hand in the concept and coming up with all these ideas. I mean, is it always like that for you? Or did this pandemic just give you a whole lot of time to delve into that aspect of, of Iron Maiden and the visual aspect, or did you always do that? Um, well, the what the pandemic did was not so much give me a lot of time, because I'm always full of ideas. I've got more ideas right. than I have things, places to put them. <laughs> but but the um, <clears throat> it actually gave us time to do it. As I said, it took eight months. It's not something you can knock up overnight to, right. to get it as, as excellent as it turned out. I mean, the same thing with the album, really. I mean, with, um, you know, the cover artwork, which basically was down to, you know, the artist and Steve together. So they went off and they, they were dealing with that. Um, and the Samurai concept, Eddie. Yes, yeah, Samurai Eddie, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and, and Steve, out of the box, when we first met up, Steve went, he said, look, I've got, I've got this track called Senjutsu. And I was thinking of making the album like a Japanese theme and having um, kind of like Samurai Eddie. And uh, we all went, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that hasn't and, been done yet, right? Yeah, and, and that's I mean, it. all the different incarnations of Eddie over the years. I don't think this is a, this is the first, kind of. It, it is. We've had sort of some references to it um, in the past, like you know, made in Japan. We had Eddie with a samurai sword mm. um, on it, but um, there is, and, and the album is, other than the cover concept, 
the album is not a concept album. I mean, it's a collection okay. of songs put together. So any um, any connections that people make are purely things that we happen to be feeling at the time where we might have been on in some kind of weird zeitgeist that we didn't even know that <laughs> right. we didn't even know we were in you know so okay. we're writing songs that seemed prophetic of the pandemic but that we were nowhere near a pandemic well this then, record's you know. been done for two years it's been in the can right almost two years ago you yeah uh, we, well uh, we finished this record um and then three months three and a half months later we were on tour in the usa doing mm -hmm. the legacy of the beast tour right so we were miles away from a pandemic, you know, they sure. didn't start, that didn't start to rear its ugly head until basically December of that, of that year, okay. you know? Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, so the following year, um, when it all started kicking off, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I said to Rod, my manager, I said, uh, Hey, I said, maybe we should do some, maybe we should do some Eddie masks, you know? And he went, no, 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 no. We're not going to do that. It's going to be over before uh, in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Famous last yeah. words. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, now, um, your voice, let's talk about this. And I know you got to get going because you got a lot of these to do. But your voice, you said you've got more horsepower now in your voice after beating cancer and having that golf ball-sized tumor removed from the base of your tongue. Now, yeah. how is that even possible for Bruce Dickinson to have more horsepower than he already has? <laughs> Well, you know, you you, you got you got a, a, a three and a half centimeter. It's like a two inch. That's like, it's like a, it's a golf ball, effectively. Okay. You know, you got a golf ball or a small apricot. You know, living yeah. uh, in the base of your tongue, and and that's where all the wind has to go past. Okay. In order to get up to ah. the your head and, and the, your head voice, which is where right. all the high notes happen. Yep. So I mean, I record a book of souls, you know, with a golf ball down my throat. Never That's unbelievable. Knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, and uh, another an, an additional strawberry. So I had apricot. I mean, I had a fruit bowl growing in my in my. <laughs> neck, you know, oh neck. Jesus! So um, I don't mean to laugh. Think of it like that. Yeah. No. But, <laughs> no. No. It's actually, you know, laughter is actually the best policy. You know, sure. when I. I do this. Um, I do this one-man show at the moment. I do it in theaters, like eleven hundred seats, uh, whatever. You are a true uh, Renaissance man, Bruce. You really are. <laughs> no, <it's been laughs> you <enough>. are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 I actually do. Um, you know, a story. I do. Tell, I tell stories about how a you know a spotty English kid from a one-horse town that nobody's ever heard of ended up right. being in a monster rock band, wearing the biggest metal band on the planet. Yeah, and wearing ridiculous trousers my whole life. And never <laughs> I was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to. People do all the time. Um, so so, and it's kind of a humorous sideways look at it. Um, but there's some obviously there's some serious bits as well as, and one of them is the whole cancer story. And I take a kind of black humoured approach to it. Um, and you can see the audience kind of shuffling a little bit when you start talking okay. about it. And right. then by the end of it, we, we're all laughing. Like, should I laugh or not? You know, yeah. Should I laugh? Exactly. <laughs> the answer is you have to, because trust me, when you're in it, you have to. Um, right. You know, and that's, and I think it's the, you know, the, the, the best, um, the best solution, uh, ultimately, uh, is, is, is to, you know, not take life so seriously because life doesn't take you seriously. <laughs> yeah, you know. Good point. Good point. Um, We're so it, happy that you yeah. uh, you beat it, Bruce. I mean, keep kicking ass. Your millions of fans worldwide are, yeah. are happy to see you doing it. And Iron but, Maiden's new record is out now, Sinjutsu. It's yeah. your 17th studio record. And wow, it is an amazing opus, just like everyone else in your catalog. Give it a spin or um, I'm not sure what the digital equivalent of that is. Um, you know, <laughs> right, right. You know, um, go take a digital, go take, go take a digital leak. Maybe. I don't know. You know, <laughs> if it's a streaming, then the, the closest thing I can get is, is well, what else streams? Do digital we have? leak. Know, yeah. yeah. The stream take a that, that works. Take, take a digital leak. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you, Bruce. Thanks for your time today, man. All right. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Cheers. Bye.